It is good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. Good to see you, Rachel, after a long time. And uh, thank you, Kavita, for assisting us in the piano today. And of course, it is uh, good to see luck. How many of you agree that when luck comes and gets on the drums, uh, it does make a difference? <laughs> see that luck, even I don't get a round of applause like that. So you're, you're more important than the pastor. But I do want to thank all of you. It's good to see you and thank you for supporting us in so many different ways. Uh, the tech team and all the people who work behind the scenes. Now, as you know, we have been looking at uh, the series on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the New Testament church. And uh, we have been talking about the role of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit has been empowering, emboldening the people of God so that they took the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world, the then known world, in the midst of great persecution. And uh, we have been looking at stories from the book of Acts about people who have been filled and controlled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now today we look at the life of one man whom the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 11 verse 24 that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And his name is Barnabas. Now if you didn't guess that, that means that you haven't paying any attention to what Nira read. So Nira, I do apologize on behalf of the church. But Barnabas, the word of God says in Acts chapter 11 verse 24 that he was full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. Now when we hear of people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, or when we hear of people who are men and women or women of faith, we have a certain image of them. We think of them as very bold. We think of them as very expressive. We think of them as people with whom signs and wonders and miracles are associated. And uh, we think that these are people with whom we can never match up to. We associate them with all sorts of expressions and boldness and charismatic uh, experiences and it goes on and on and on. But we see in the life of Barnabas that the word of God says that he was filled with the spirit of God. Now while all those dimensions of being filled with the spirit are true and they have their place, we tend to overlook the tender, the compassionate, the slow, the working behind the scenes aspects of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now when you take Barnabas' life, the word of God says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. But he is not noted for being an active preacher. He preached, he taught, that is true, but Barnabas was never on the same level and caliber or the league, if you please, of Paul or Peter or Stephen. Wherever they preached, there were miracle signs and wonders. Barnabas is not noted for that kind of preaching and teaching. Barnabas is not noted for writing many epistles. The apostle Paul wrote 13 epistles. Barnabas is not noted for that. Barnabas is not noted for extensive preaching and planting of many, many churches. In fact, Barnabas was not even on the deacons committee. You remember in Acts chapter 6, they appointed deacons and Barnabas didn't even make it on that. So in other words, he was a pretty average, ordinary person in the church. But the word of God reminds us that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was controlled. He was empowered. He led a life that was yielded to God, the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, he stayed the course with that one important ministry God had given him. And that ministry was the ministry of encouragement. So this was one ministry, one gifting that he had. 
and Barnabas faithfully stayed the course, completed the ministry that God had given him. Now we've all received encouragement at some point in our lives, haven't we? People have given us a word, people have shared with us, they've encouraged us, and that has meant the world to us. Let me tell you a story about how an army general was encouraged by an angel. Now this is a fun story, so you don't have to look so seriously at me. And so this is the story of an army general who died and went to heaven. And so when he got to the gates, you know the usual, uh, the usual uh, performance appraisal and the usual uh, stuff that you have to go through. He went through that. He was assigned to a room by an angel and he settled down in his room. And the military general was very happy in his little corner in heaven. The next day, he heard the sound of music. He heard the sound of a band playing. And so he asked one of the angels, he said, what's going on? And uh, the angel said, well, a pastor died and he was just brought into heaven. And so we are celebrating. And the army general was a little perturbed about this. And so he told the angel, you know, I'm a little discouraged because here am I. A military general, I served in the thick of all the battles amongst non-Christians, unbelievers, and whatever you call it, and I maintain my moral standards, my ethical standards, my spirituality, and I come to heaven, and I don't get a special welcome. But this pastor, you know, who spends most of his time in the church with church people, saints, and all of that. He passes away and he comes to heaven and you give him a rousing welcome. And here's what the angel said to encourage the general. The angel said, General, we get many, many military generals to heaven, but very rarely do we get a pastor into heaven. So when one comes, we just make the best use of it and we celebrate. The joke's on the pastor so you can afford to to laugh but uh, we all understand that story funny as it was it underscores the importance of encouragement and in our lives we know that at some point people have encouraged us and I don't mean the blessed generalities where they say well good work great work uh, that's all what we call blessed generalities it makes us feel good but sometimes we wonder did they really mean it when I refer to encouragement, I'm referring to authentic, I'm referring to genuine and very specific words of encouragement that we have received from people at some point in our lives. And as a result of that, we have risen to great heights. We have achieved things that we would have never achieved on our own. And so we will see in the life of Barnabas as we talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that as the Spirit of God led him that he stayed the course and completed his ministry of encouragement I'd like to re-emphasize that he was not a noted preacher or a great miracle worker but his ministry was that one of encouragement now Barnabas is referred to around 30 times in the book of Acts and there are five narratives or episodes where he figures quite prominently. Now I'm not going to talk about all five and I believe you will say to yourself, well that's good news Pastor Ben. But I'm just going to touch on two episodes and uh, as we pass along I might make a quick reference to the third. The first one is found in Acts chapter 9, the passage that Nira read and thank you for reading for us Nira. And in Acts chapter 9 we come to the first story. It says that when Paul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. Now we all know that the Apostle Paul met the Lord Jesus Christ in Damascus. And we read in Acts chapter 9 that uh, after his conversion, he was mentored, he was discipled by a man called Ananias. And he started preaching the gospel in Damascus. But pretty soon, because of the vigorous nature of his preaching, there was persecution. They didn't want Paul there. So he left. You know the story where they let him down uh, in a basket over the wall, and he's back in Jerusalem. 
he now knows the Lord he's convinced uh, Jesus is the Messiah and he wants to join the community of believers in Jerusalem and according to the passage that was read for us we discover that when he tried to join the believers they said nothing doing we know who you were before and we are not trusting you and that's why in verse 26 we read from the word of god but they were all afraid of him not believing that he really was a disciple and i want for you to imagine in today's context that there is a person uh, it could be a, a man or a woman who's been very anti-god very anti-christ in their opinion they come on tv they blaspheme god they say all kinds of things about god christ and the church and you know what this person looks like and you know this person means trouble for christians and trouble for the church and one sunday let's say next sunday this person walks through the door and how will you and i feel we'll start texting each other saying so and so is here you better be careful don't talk to so and so we don't know why he or she is here maybe this is a trick maybe this is to get into the church and find out what we are doing and naturally we are afraid when those things happen and that's exactly what was going on here but verse 26 we read that but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. I like that word but because it says Barnabas was different. So the rest of the church members said don't touch this man because he means trouble. But Barnabas talked to Paul alone, checked his story out and he told the church this man is legitimate he is genuine he is sincere he has met the lord and he invited paul and that was the beginning of paul's ministry in jerusalem narrative number two which is found in acts chapter 11 and here we see that the word of the lord has spread in antioch and people are coming to know the lord and the church in jerusalem says barnabas we want you to go and check out the ministry in Antioch and Barnabas gets there and uh, we uh, we see the next uh, yes Acts chapter yes 11 yes uh, the next slide please the next slide very good uh, news of this reached the church and they sent Barnabas and when he got there what did he do he encouraged them to remain true to the Lord once again you will see that wherever Barnabas is in whatever situation he is he is encouraging people he is encouraging people here to remain true to the Lord he told the believers in Antioch you turn to Christ this is the beginning of your walk with Jesus but stay the course there will be times of persecution remain faithful and he encouraged them and then the next verse is what I want to focus on uh, yes this says he was a man full of the Holy Spirit we talked about that this is verse 24 and the next slide please and uh, no I'm sorry let's go back one more slide and we see at the bottom of the slide the second half of the slide then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul and when he found him he brought him to Antioch and for one whole year the two of them Paul and Barnabas that is they taught the church the point that I want to make is when Barnabas got to Antioch he started to preach he started to teach suddenly he realized there is another person who can do this better than me there is Paul he was a Pharisee he had all the Pharisaic training and he knows the word better than me and uh, Barnabas does not have an issue with his ego he goes all the way to Tarsus finds Paul and he says come and help me in this ministry so from these two narratives I want to leave for us two insights from the life of Barnabas the encourager. Barnabas who was filled with the Holy Spirit continued to encourage people. The first one is that an encourager sees past beyond people's past. Sees beyond people's past or sees past people's past. 
uh, an encourager is able to look beyond the failures of people. Encouragers give people a second chance. Encouragers tell people, this is not the end. You can start all over again. And isn't this how God looks at us when we fail, when we mess things up, we come to Jesus and with Jesus failure is never final. And that's what Barnabas was communicating to these people. As he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was telling the people failure need not be final in God's economy. And that's what encouragers do. Now I remember some months ago, I told you the story of Roy Regal. Do you remember that story? If you don't, that's fine. I'll give you a synopsis again. Roy Regals was known as Wrong Way Regals. Roy Regals was an American football player. And you know, when there was the game, the, what they called the Rose, uh, the Rose Bowl, and the team that he was playing for, the, he was in the middle of the game, and uh, he took the ball, he was in possession of the ball, and suddenly he started running in the wrong direction and so Roy Regals was running in the wrong direction and he was scoring against his own team this does happen from time to time to uh, football players I'm told because when they pick up the ball and there is a fumble and there is a rush to gain possession of the ball they are disoriented and they start running in the wrong direction this is exactly what happened to Roy Regals it's a true story it took place in 1929 and as Roy Regals was running the wrong way, they had to get some of his teammates to chase him and to bring him down before he got a touchdown. So imagine the chaos. Your team members shouting, yelling, trying to bring you down. And they brought him down in good time. But Roy Regals, when they went back for halftime or the break, Roy Regals told his coach, Coach Price, he said, Coach Price, I have embarrassed you. I have let the team down. Please take me off the team. This is the end. I am not coming back again. And you know what Coach Price said? Coach Price said, Roy, you are getting back on the field after the break. And Coach Price said, Roy, the game is only half over. And that's the kind of spirit that Barnabas had. We see here, here is Paul, a new believer, a genuine believer wanting to serve the Lord. The people of God saying, we don't trust you. We don't touch you. We don't want to have anything to do with you. And Paul would have certainly felt discouraged. But Barnabas comes through and says, Paul, this is not the end of the game. Let's start all over again and let's start a new chapter with the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And that's the first thing that I want to share with you. The second insight is that an encourager is a bridge builder and a networker. Barnabas filled with the Holy Spirit goes to Antioch and then he discovers that he can teach, he can preach, but there is somebody who can do it better than him. And he builds this network, he goes all the way to Tarsus, brings Paul and he says, come on Paul, you got to help me with this. And together they build this ministry and the church in Antioch, Antioch is the place where believers were first called Christians. It was such a significant church. And Barnabas provided the opportunity, built that bridge, established that network so that Paul could come and get involved in the ministry. I want for you to think for a moment, if Barnabas did not do this, if Barnabas did not bring Paul in, what would we not have? We would not have 13 books in the New Testament. How many do we have now? You're still counting, that's fine. 37? Oh, 27, yes, yeah. See, the pastor said 37, so no. 27 in the New Testament. 27 minus 13 is how much? It's not only Bible, we are slow on math today as well. 14. So in the New Testament, you will have just 14 books if Paul was not around. And that's because of what Barnabas did. Now, some of you might say, that's nice, Pastor Ben, because when I want to read the New Testament, I can go straight from John and quickly jump into Hebrews and I'll be done the New Testament very quickly. But the truth of the matter is God chose Paul 
to be a missionary, to travel to plant churches, but he also chose Barnabas to encourage and give Paul that needed support. Now, we cannot all be a Paul. We cannot all be a great Stephen. We cannot all be the great Peter. But we can all be the Barnabas. We can all, as God's Holy Spirit fills us, like Barnabas, we can be a bridge builder and we can build uh, networks for people. We can connect them and provide opportunities so that people can flow with the purpose of God and people can discover God's agenda for their lives. Again, I've told this story when I got started at Church of God, but it is a very, very powerful story and it is a true story. And so it is worth repeating. How many of us have heard of Billy Graham? That's a silly question. Some of you are like, Pastor Ben, what kind of question is that? We've all heard of Billy Graham. How many of you have heard of Henrietta Mears? Look around and see how many hands go up. Not many, hardly any. Henrietta Mears was the lady who met with Billy Graham. She was Excuse me. She was an elderly lady in the ministry who was in charge of Christian education at the First Baptist Church. And she met with Billy Graham and a few other young men at the time. And there was a moment, there was a season in Billy Graham's life when he was having serious doubts about the Christian faith. He was even thinking of giving up the ministry. But Henrietta Mears took him under her wing, counseled him, mentored him, and Billy Graham has been used of God to reach the world. Not all of us can be Billy Grahams, but we can all be Henrietta Mears. Not all of us can be Pauls and Peters and Stevens, but we can all be Barnabas. I believe that every day God brings people into our lives, but we can talk to them, we can encourage them and be specific. Specific, authentic, genuine encouragement will move them to greater heights that they can achieve for God and for God's glory. And that's the story, that's the ministry of encouragement that Barnabas fulfilled under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. May God bless the reflection of his word this afternoon. At this time, we'd like to... Uh, Prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. As I mentioned at the outset, this is an important part of our service. And uh, in the Word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul mentions many things about the Lord's Supper. And the church in Corinth was actually abusing the Lord's Supper. They were taking it and treating it like a little get-together. And the Apostle Paul says, this is a serious moment in your service. And there's a verse where he says, let each person examine himself or herself. And that word examine means to scrutinize, to look to see if this is genuine. It is the word that is used when you want to test metal and see if it is genuine or if it's fake. And so we are going to spend a few moments in silence coming before God and asking God the Holy Spirit. We have been talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We ask God the Holy Spirit to minister to us and to examine our hearts to prepare us so that we would partake of the Lord's Supper in a proper and a meaningful manner. And to help us prepare for that, Donna Lee is going to lead us in a song. It's a favorite, it's an old song, we all know it, Nothing But The Blood. And as she leads us in Nothing But The Blood, may we close our eyes, have our heads bowed, and just reflect on the price that our Lord Jesus Christ paid so that you and I could come into the presence of God and be called the children of God. Don Ali.